Daniel Salamanca. Daniel Domingo Salamanca, Yuri, 8 July 1869, 17 July 1935, was a Bolivian politician who served as the 33rd president of Bolivia from 1931 to 1934. 1934, during the country's disastrous Chaco War with Paraguay. Political career. Born in Cochabamba, Salamanca studied law before being elected to Bolivia's Chamber of Deputies in 1899 for the Liberal Party. Two years later, President José Manuel Pando appointed him finance minister. Salamanca eventually split with the Liberals, however, and helped to found the new Republican Party, running unsuccessfully for vice president in 1917. Following the split of a faction opposed to the growing, some would say, ruthless ambitions of Republican leader Bautista Saavedra, the ascetic, professorial Salamanca founded, with a number of other men including Juan Maria Escalier, the so-called genuine Republican Party Partido Republicano Genuino. Salamanca himself ran for president on the Genuino ticket in the elections of 1925, but lost to Saavedra's hand-picked successor, Hernando Siles. Shaken by his defeats, Salamanca retired from politics and dedicated himself to teaching law. In the aftermath of the military overthrow of Hernando Siles in 1930, Salamanca was elected and took office in March 1931. Presidency Immediately upon assuming office, Salamanca introduced an unpopular austerity program and clamped down on political opposition to his government. In what was likely a measure to avert public attention to the economic problems still facing the country, he also revived hostilities with Paraguay in the disputed Chaco region. Indeed, Salamanca had been for a long time one of the hawks in Bolivian politics, advocating firmness against Paraguay in the territorial dispute. Upon taking office, his motto became, We must stand firm in the Chaco. Given that the parched region of the Grand Chaco, largely uninhabited, had been under dispute between Bolivia and Paraguay ever since the creation of both republics, each proceeded to establish a line of small garrisons, fourteens, simply to establish a national presence and press their claims. Sporadic battles would occur, but cooler heads tended to prevail, especially because neither Bolivia nor Paraguay, the only landlocked and poorest countries in South America, could afford a full-scale war over the Chaco. Neither, however, relinquished much in their claim to the entire Chaco region, either. All of this changed when oil was found on the foothills of the Andes deep in Bolivian territory. It was then widely assumed that the nearby Chaco also contained oil, possibly in vast quantities. In addition, the explosive economic and political situation prompted President Salamanca to use the dispute to shore up national unity and distract attention from his government's shortcomings. He ordered a stepped-up effort at establishing more fourteens wherever Paraguay wasn't established already. A Bolivian Army Exploration Unit was sent deep into the Chaco early in 1932, whereupon they chanced to find a large lake in the middle of the desert-like scrubland. It was a perfect location for a permanent garrison. Unfortunately, the lake named Pitintuta by the Paraguayans turned out to be occupied by the Paraguayan military. Upon the arrival of the Bolivian expedition, a battle ensued and the Paraguayan troops fled. This, in essence, started the disastrous Chaco War 1932-1935. The quick escalation of the war only exacerbated already severe economic problems in Bolivia and in Paraguay, while causing many thousands of casualties. To make matters worse, Salamanca had very poor relations with the Bolivian high command from the beginning of the conflict, when he demoted a Bolivian general and placed the German Hans Kunt at the head of the country's armed forces at war. Kunt had led a military mission to Bolivia prior to World War I. A string of devastating defeats on the southern front of the war at the hands of the Paraguayans, who knew the terrain much better than the Bolivians, most of whom hailed from the Altiplano Highlands, precipitated Kunt's replacement. Salamanca's relationship with the general only got worse, as the mercurial president then in his mid-sixties tended to blame the military leadership for the continuing setbacks on the field. 
things came to a head when Salamanca decided to replace Penaranda and a number of his increasingly mutinous commandants. Coop On 27 November 1934, the Bolivian generals deposed Salamanca while he visited their headquarters at Villamonts to explain the reasons for the changes. Penaranda and his co-conspirators Colonel Toro, Major Bush and others in the end decided to keep democratic appearances intact and replaced Salamanca with his vice president, the decidedly more pliable José Luis Tejado of the Liberal Party. It has been alleged that Tejado was in on the plot itself. The elderly and sickly Salamanca at that point was allowed to retire to his native Cochabamba, where he died of stomach cancer less than a year later on July 1935, only days after the establishment of the ceasefire. A highly controversial figure, he was blamed by many for the war, while others respected him enormously as a man who did all he could to maintain his country's foothold on the Chaco without resorting to warfare, but was betrayed by a mutinous and incompetent military high command. The rather dour intellectual Salamag. He is also supposed to have remarked dryly to Penaranda upon the encirclement of the house where he was staying at Villamonts during the coup. Congratulations, General. You just completed your first and only successful military siege of the entire war.